all this power requires a bit of restraint on the ice. You have to be very gentle with it to be able to gain speed, to be able to accelerate. Jimmy Ma came in sixth in men's singles at the 2022 U.S. Figure Skating Championships. He trains at the new and sprawling Skating Club of Boston in Norwood. Core control is a big deal. Working on the basics very consistently with a lot of volume. Ma says elite figure skaters can tell who's good by listening to their edges. This is like the no good, like, you know, on toe pick and stuff like that. Then you get that like deep, something like that, where basically it feels like a hot knife through butter. And it sounds just. Maintaining this 190,000 square foot, three rink facility is the job of club director, John Jepson. Turns out everyone here skates on thin ice. There's only about an inch and a half of ice and it's misted on very thin layers. And underneath the cement floor, there's roughly five miles of plastic pipe that is filled with glycol or brine because it has very low freezing points. The strangely mesmerizing ice resurfacer repairs scuffed up ice by shaving off the very top layer. Behind the blade is cold water, which creates a slush and that fills in cracks. And then on the outside of the conditioner is water that's roughly 160 degrees that will smooth it out. Smooth, fresh ice is crucial for every skater's safety, especially when there are 22 of them. The Lexington-based Hayden Nets are an award-winning synchronized skating team. Everyone has different coaches, different techniques that they learn, but we, the name of the sport is synchro to get everyone to look like one. Team members Stephen Murray and Ava Dimmick say the Hayden Nets skate for the sheer love of the sport. They are not paid and spend 16 to 20 hours a week training. We skate four days a week, and in those four days, we have off-ice training, strength, conditioning, flexibility, and that's on top of if we're working or if we have school. When he's not on the ice, Murray is a mechanical engineer and can explain how skates work. There are two edges, the inside and the outside edge. You sharpen a hollow into it. If you want a tighter radius, we'll give you a deeper hollow, and that'll give you a bit more grip on the ice. If you're not on the right edge, or if you're too far forward, if you're going to hit that toe pick, it's going to slow you down. It's just incredibly fun. It's once you add the team aspect to it, you get all these different minds together, and you can create something incredibly beautiful. Before ice rinks existed, people skated on ponds. They also used ponds to farm ice. New England would export ice all over the world. And at uh, the late 1800s, ice production generated uh, apparently 9% of the total gross production revenues in the country. Archie McIntyre is executive director of the nonprofit Wright Lock Farm in Winchester, which dates back to 1638. We are, in fact, one of the very, very few farms fully operating inside of 128. So it's a very important resource for our community. McIntyre says during winters long ago, ice was harvested and stored in houses like this one, built in 1827. The walls are very thick and they're filled with sawdust so that it is uh, very insulated. The Wright Lock Farms Ice House is a mini museum for visitors. On display is this film of a Pennsylvania ice farm in 1919. It's not until the ice is usually 10 or 12 inches thick that it's strong enough to have equipment and horses and wagons out on the ice. Farmers sawed the ice into huge blocks. Those individual blocks would be transported in the water to a ramp into the back of a wagon. These ice blocks could weigh up to 300 pounds, so they're hard to transport. But when you did have to lift them, you use these big ice hooks, uh, which uh, grab the ice. The business froze up around the 1930s when modern refrigeration was born. There is still ice harvesting happening today, but it's more on a sort of a demonstration basis to be able to pass that kind of knowledge down to future generations.
<laughs> and if you paid close attention, you might have noticed that some of the photos in the piece are credited to Thompson Ice House. Right, and that's an actual um, ice museum right. in South Bristol, Maine. They, in fact, still do uh, every winter. One time they go out and they do an ice harvest. Hundreds of people turn out for that and actually save some of the ice and use it in the summer to make ice cream. Which mm, is nice, that is kind of nice. All right. <laughs>